Sounds good. Welcome, Prime Gaming, back Prime Gaming to Prime Gaming, AGDQ 22 Online, Prime Gaming. I want to thank all of y'all for being here, all of y'all for sitting tight, getting toasty. I want to shout you out, cute chat. I, 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 I. Listen, we have climbed to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro to find the most killtacular Halo 5 full game legendary run that we could find. And wouldn't you know it, it's the untouchable, invincible, inconceivable distro with Halo 5 Guardians. Take it away. Hello, I'm distro. I will be the runner today. We're doing Halo 5, not on easy, not on normal, not on heroic, but on legendary, the hardest difficulty. Joining me today are my comfy blankets and my co-commentator, Phobic. Hello, I am Phobic. I speedrun Halo 5 on both Easy and Legendary, as well as I maintain and make the Halo 5 Auto Splitter. We will give a countdown here and on go. Time will start. Three, two, one, go. We start off in an in game cutscene here. On your right hand side, you'll notice that Elite has a sword. We're going to be thrusting backwards and picking that up. Swords give us a 20% movement speed boost in Halo 5, as well as it has no ammo, but it still will give us a 20% movement speed boost. You'll also notice that Halo 5 has a few abilities different from previous Halo installments. Namely, we have Sprint, Thruster, which Distro is keeping on cooldown, a stabilized ability that holds us midair, a ground pound ability that sends us towards the ground, as well as a Spartan charge. All these together help us get through this game extremely quickly. And I will hand a uh, little bit of incident there. Sometimes happens, but getting right back into it. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a... Over, yeah, a little unfortunate, yes. Yeah. But I will hand over commentary here to Distro for the uh, first tr trick of the game. Yeah, keep in mind this is legendary, you usually don't die there, but sometimes you get unlucky. Uh, there's a small trick here, the soldier scripted to phase away, and I can use it for a small momentum boost, I just get there. But there is a bigger trick coming up, I have to wait for a checkpoint first, because it's a bit finicky and I might miss it a few times. Let me see. Ah, uh, there we go. So there is a cannon that is scripted to spin around, um, you can see it in the middle right there. And if I jump precisely, it will launch me up in the air, let's see if I can get it. I got the launch, but not in the wrong direction. Let's try it again. 
If you go too far left, you can instantly uh, disintegrate you, and if you go too far right, then you can get a very weird launch or get launched into the wall, which you don't want. So let's try that again. There we go. That's a much more beautiful one. This allows you to skip a bunch of fighting, uh, because we ground pound into a structure. We have to go here as a mission objective. We skipped a bunch of enemies, which is super convenient for Legendary, and we can activate the button from out of bounds, which is a mission objective as well. Now we have to wait um, for a perfect time, pretty much. Hold on. Because if I go too fast, the game will walk me back into the structure, and I will have to wait for the door to open, which takes a long time. And if I go too late, the geometry will load around me, and I will actually be stuck there, and I will have to revert. So I'm glad I got that. Coming up is another... Um, skip a second launch. This one is similar to the first one, but quite a bit more difficult. If I failed a few times, it's normal, but because I have to focus for the rest of the level, I will hand over the commentary to Phobic. So you can see the cannon on the Distro's right over here. Distro's gonna walk up the hill when he can, thrust her over, and have it hit him sideways over on top of hallway. Wrong direction, but we will try that again. We have a convenient checkpoint here. Uh, we d use the Kraken's leg on the right-hand side to uh, time our jump. Distro wasn't expecting to get such an early checkpoint, so it threw him a little off. Watch out for the Kraken. Let's the try that one more time. Uh, Distro is also picking up some nades here constantly on the right-hand side by that weapon ammo box. Those are splinter nades. We will be using them in the end fight coming up ahead. And there we go. There is a beautiful launch straight down on top of this hallway and normally we do go inbounds here however Distro will like to do a different strat mostly for setup purposes he will be hitting the load from out of bounds and then having the area load in around him similar to uh, what we did with the button so drop down and hit the load right here jump out into the abyss and everything loads in around us and we are inside the end fight Give it a moment to load. There we go. Some new enemies that we have in Halo 4 and 5 here. Uh, Prometheans. This is a knight. He's going to open up his mask and we're just going to shoot him in the head. Easy headshots. Knights have plenty of weak spots on them. They're all glowing. So, Distro, these knights are in animations. He's just going to shoot off their sides and weaken them. Use these splinter nades to weaken up a third knight here. And then head on for the fourth knight. The fifth knight back there dies on his own. He's scripted to do that. There are also some dog things running around. Those are called crawlers. They are the infantry of the Prometheans. Uh, not getting the headshot on this knight. We can damage him enough so his face mask comes off. Knight is currently hiding behind the center. And there we go. That is Osiris. It is a, it is the recommended level to start off on if you were ever planning to speedrun Halo 5. It is extremely fun, as well as easy to pick up. But now we are on to Blue Team. Uh, for Blue Team, we will be playing as a different character. Previous mission, we played as Spartan Locke. This mission, we're going to be playing as Master Chief. We got to play as Master Chief for three missions in total across the campaign. Chief is a lot more clunky than Locke. He has a slower thruster recharge. However, he recharges shields super fast. So he is very convenient to run past enemies. Although for the first set of enemies, we are going to be skipping them. This is called glass skip, what Distro is doing right now. And we will be able to skip the first set of enemies as well as skip an elevator ride. Uh, for the out of bounds here, I will hand over the commentary to Distro. All right, so this is the out of bounds part, the first one of this level, a uh, <laughs> little hint here. But I have to hit some low triggers, and I know I got them because um, there will be enemies spawning in the next room, so I just need to look down. I'm pretty sure I got it, let's see. Yup, I see a grunt. That means I'm fine, and I'm preparing for an inbounds uh, very slowly. Here we go. So, um, I am going inbounds here, but I have to hit a low trigger, and it freezes the game for a bit because it's some long loads happening. And this is an elevator ride we just skipped entirely, and uh, well, the enemies as well. Now that we're back inbounds, I'm going to wait for a checkpoint, because the next room is crowded. There is a ton of enemies to my left and in the middle of the room. Ooh, a bit unfortunate because I got hit by a plasma pistol overcharge. 
But that's, that's why I wait for a checkpoint. There we go. This is why. Sometimes on Legendary... It happened again. <laughs> Sometimes on Legendary you can get quite unlucky. But if I stick on the right side of the room, the survival chances are pretty high normally. And I can run past all the enemies. There is now the bounce here. You can just clip through the wall like that. Yep, that's a thing. And um, I go back inbounds from here by clambering. And during it out of bounds, I didn't have a lot of height, which means that I skipped the trigger. Um, because normally there would be a ton of enemies here, including Storm Rifle Jackets, which are lethal. But now I can just run through the section without having to fight anything. And upcoming is a bridge in the casual play you're supposed to try and cross, and then there's a hunter animation where the hunter knocks you down. Um, and then you drop into the cutscene, but it turns out you can just go to the cutscene right away. And uh, over here is a tunnel section of blue team. I'm going to attempt a trick which is called Ram Slide. Let's see. There we go. Um, that's an unpatched thing, but we will get more into that later. It's some kind of power jump if you time your slide correctly over a stair uh, or over stairs or over a ramp or something similar structure. We're just two invisible elites coming out, but I stun one of them by EMPing him. Um, that means a plasma pistol overcharge. And there's a bunch of ramp slides here, which are just fun to do. It's one of my uh, favorite tricks. I missed this one, unfortunately, but it's okay. And upcoming are a bunch of suicide grunts. And the idea is to just headshot them and wait until the grenades explode. I said my team is to go back to the wall because I want him to be alive for later on. Um, for an upcoming trick, but I will let Phobic explain that later. And um, yeah, now that the grunts are dead, there's a room filled with enemies. I will just distract and kill them with the grenade as much as I can. And there is an elite with a sword here, and if you remember, the sword gives you a 20% movement boost, so it's very convenient. And um, coming up is a big skip, and I will hand over the commentary to Phobic because I will have to focus. So like Distro mentioned, we have a huge skip coming up here. This skip is brand new to GDQ. Uh, it saves two and a half minutes. We're currently at the mid part of this level. We're going to be going all the way to the end fight. So we got to skip a lot here. So once this button comes up here, Distro is going to press it. Jump into the elevator, turn around, jump up on a ledge, do dodge one teleport, walk to the right at a precise time, dodge a second teleport, and then get out of bounds. He's going to make this look a lot easier than it is. So walk to the right. It could take a few tries. This is way harder than it looks. It is, definitely. Okay, um, in the meantime, maybe I can explain um, why it's good that my team is alive. Oh, yes. <laughs> so this skip right here, uh, we're going to be skipping this hunter room behind us. Normally the hunters, if you don't kill them, they're supposed to follow us down to the end fight. However, uh, because we do this skip, even though we don't kill them, for whatever reason, they don't follow us down. It has something to do with the teammates. We're not so quite sure. If our teammates are dead, we probably won't get this, uh, the hunter skip part of it. Although, uh, because his teammates are alive, we will only have to fight two hunters instead of four. Skipping in our room up here, this is called Reactor Room. Uh, I don't think anybody misses that room, to be honest. Saw it for a few seconds, it's gone, out of our memory. Below us right now, we are walking on top of Coolant Room. You're supposed to fly around with a banshee, press a whole bunch of buttons, destroy some fans. No need to do that anymore. Let's go all the way straight to the end fight. And in this end fight, we will be doing a little bit of an awkward out of bounds here and getting back on underneath this platform to hit a few triggers. This is going to try and lead these two elites over to him by taunting them with a few BR shots. And there is a somewhat interesting enemy in here. I haven't talked too much about the downed mechanics. Uh, when you die, uh, you don't actually die die. You get put into a downed state. Typically, we don't want to whoop, die at all. <laughs> saw that one coming. Uh, but you saw there Distro had to immediately revert. This is because if Distro gets hit by this enemy here, the fuel rod grunt, any kind of fuel rod, will instantly kill Distro. 
You won't get that second try or second life, if you want to call it that. And he is currently trying to clean up all these fuel rod grunts before going up and hitting a button. It is good to be safe here and make sure that they are all dead. Once we hit this button, we're going to start three different waves coming in here. First is going to be a jackal wave. There's 16 jackals in total. Jackals in this uh, game are somewhat OP, I would say. They're known to kill entire Spartan fire teams casually and in the speed run. This is because they use the storm rifle. The storm rifle uh, in this version of the game, we're playing unpatched, is extremely powerful. If you have ever played multiplayer back in the day for Halo 5, you would have known how overpowered this we that weapon is. We don't use it in the speed run because it's not very useful to us. Distro is going to be sorting the hunter here. Uh, when you sort a hunter, it gets stunned. Once again, this is another uh, game version uh, difference that we have. We, Because we're playing the unpatched version of the game, we can stun a hunter with by sorting it and just hit it in the back. Uh, this show, you know where the second hunter went? Yeah, he went uh, down there um, in the basement for the... Oh, we have a basement off. hunter there. That is rare. That is very unlucky, but I'll try my best to save this. Okay. Uh, we also have an enraged hunter. That was the basement hunter coming back up. He is mad that you killed his friends. As well as I uh, missed it there, but Distro backsmacked a few elites and attempted to rocket the far one. We should only have that hunter, six grunts, and maybe that jackal left. So doing a little bit of cleanup work here to finish off the fight. It's a little bit out of control, but that's one thing about Legendary, when things like that happen, you have to be able to improvise and adapt, and that's what I'm doing right now. Because I got really unfortunate in the first two levels of the run, but I'm trying my best to save it. Hopefully I can get the checkpoint, but it doesn't look like it. Now I have to fight the Hunter and that's it, and I think uh, while that happens, I think we have time for one donation or two. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, we've got quite a few coming in. We've got $5 from Leon Hillen, who says, Good luck to Distro from the Bistro. Love your face and have fun. And we've got $47 from Bat Chat. Hi, Distro. Hi, Phobic. H5 is so fun to run, and I'm glad you get the chance to showcase it again for GDQ and a great cause. The Warden sends his regards. Thank you, Bat. And thank you, Leon. Yeah, yeah this is a little bit unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> that hunter is just prowling the top. Okay, I have to get Like I said, um, fuel rods can down us here, and the hunter is actually using a fuel rod, so... The thing is, Evil I didn't get the checkpoint, killer. which is the scariest part. So oh, I don't no. Get... Ah, there we go, finally. That. <laughs> oh, that's okay. fun. That's marathon luck right there. Uh, where is he? Okay, fine. Shooting one of your teammates. There you go. All right. <laughs> oh boy. And with that, that is the end of Blue Team. And we are on to Glast. We will be starting off in a box, which we are pretending is an elevator. So while that's going on, I think we have like 40 seconds for donations. Sure thing. $5 from Soul of Nobody. Thank you for the incredible run so far this year and keeping Halo consistently in the lineup. Good luck on the run, and I can't wait to see Master Chief lock Spartan Lock with his armor locking locker. $5 from Arthur XD. Hey, first time donating to this great cause. I lost a very good person to lung cancer four years ago. Looking forward to that Resident Evil Village run. Good luck, Distro. Thank you. For one more? Yeah, yeah. one more. Sure. $10 from Colin Zeraldo. Love me some Halo. Like I love my favorite holiday, Halloween. Okay, good luck on the run. These All puns right. are killing me. Spartan Jameson Lock, UNSC. Thank you for the donations. Um, soon this door will open. And there's going to be a Marine on the other side. I will nate him instantly and, well, kill him. But that's part of the dialogue skip. That's uh, step one. 
The door will open right about now. There we go. So that was part one of the dialogue skip. In part two, I just have to get to a trigger which um, starts a bunch of dialogue past this, um, well, past this section. Then I go back to the room here, and when I hear "Damn it, Kyle, do it," I know that I actually skipped a bunch of dialogue. A few lines. I don't know how much time it saves, but yeah, it's a thing. And over here, there's a bunch of crawlers waiting on the other side of the door. Um, the idea is I just run past them and do a ramp slide away. In the casual playthrough, you're supposed to um, clear this section. There's a ton of enemies spawning in. But it turns out you can just go to where you need to go. But there's a gate blocking that. Oh no, what do we do? Oh, it turns out you can thrust into this geometry. It launches you upwards and uh, we're out of bounds. We have to go inbounds shortly to hit the trigger. That's where you see the freeze there. And now that we went inbounds and hit the freeze, we're going out of bounds again. Look at that. Isn't that cool? And uh, yeah, out of bounds, inbounds, out of bounds, and we go inbounds again. And there is a Warthog, which is this uh, car-like um, vehicle here. Um, and it's very conveniently located, because that's where I need to go anyway. And I will drive it up to a gate, and uh, there's four soldiers I have to kill to open the gate. But in the speedrun, we actually exploit some physics in Halo 5. If I park the hog diagonally like this, I can spin up and thrust with the correct timing. I could launch up in the air like that. And I will hand over the commentary to Phobic. So you can see Distro is nading the hog towards himself here. This is because there's a trigger just before the hog, and we want to be going as fast as possible over this bridge. We are on a timer right now once he hits that trigger. And if he goes fast enough, if you look up to the mountain there, he will get something called gooey deload. The mountain looks all gooey, that's what we want. That means none of that area is spawned in and there is a void underneath it. From here, Distro is going to do a brand new skip to GDQ. This is called Void Fight. We are going to be sending the enemies into the void. But first, Distro has to hit the triggers to start the end fight. To do that, he is going to go all the way up this hill, jump out over the bit, the abyss, and then ground pound back inwards to solid ground. I'm going to be quiet here to let him concentrate. Ah, oh, unfortunate. Unfortunate. This is a very difficult trick. I should uh, remind people of that. So what happened there is if you were listening closely, you heard uh, possibly an enemy spawn trigger coming in, like a little bush noise. That's our cue to turn around and try and jump back in bounds. If he does it correctly this time, we will be on a two minute timer. Uh, while we wait for the enemy spawns to come in. Take one more shot at this. Okay. Okay, there we go. So now we're on a two minute timer, and that was a long, that's 13.55 on your timer distro that we will be waiting to. While we are waiting for that, we will be taking the tank, slowly clearing out the area at our own pace, as well as setting up the hog to load in the area and drive up the hill. Uh, while we're waiting for that, could we get a few donations, please? Absolutely. We've got a $500 donation from Noel who says, I played so much Halo 2 growing up. I hope everyone is having a great 2022 so far. Thank you to the GDQ staff, all the runners, and everyone else who helps put this on. Good luck to all the runners. Thank you for your generous donation. And we've got uh, $25 from Maris. Thanks, AGDQ, for being my husband's favorite time of year. I wanted to donate during Halo in his honor because he worked on making the newest Halo game. So shout out to him. I love you, Tobias. And let's all help prevent cancer. Thank you very much, Maris. I'll take the gun. Time for one more? Uh, yep. yes. Sure. We got till 13.55 on the timer. Oh, cool. All right. We've got $100 from Bree. Halo 5 holds a special place in my heart as the first game I shipped. It's always a genuine honor to see it dismantled by the speedrunning community and to see it used for such a wonderful cause here. Cancer is a horrible monster, and I'm so glad to see us all united to help speedrun new strats to defeat it one day. 
every dollar at a time. Thanks to everyone who helps organize this event, donate, tune in, and just be your lovely selves. And Distro, don't forget, as we learned a few months ago, the magic number is 344. Best of luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank okay, you very so, much, Bree. <laughs> yeah, Bree was uh, the dev um, doing an IGN interview uh, with them of the synopsis of Halo 5. <laughs> I can so move yes, now, right? I don't have much. the time. Uh, yes, go, go, go. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Okay, so the area is loaded in here. The fight is done. Everything has fallen into the void and just died for us. And if everything has gone correctly, nothing should be up here. There should be a whole bunch of dialogue and it should end. Ooh, which there isn't. Nice. So sometimes there's a knight up here. There's others that could use your help. And uh, it just depends on timing of when we get up here. Sometimes there's a knight left over from the spawns. We just grab the rocket launcher and shoot him with it if we do need to do that. As well as you saw Distro do a rapid fire bug there. Uh, that has been patched out of the game since. Uh, we are on to our first auto scroller of Halo 5 Meridian Station. Distro, take it away. All right, so this is the first out of three levels where there is no combat and you just have to listen to dialogue and talk to people. Uh, first, I have to hit the trigger so the dialogue starts, but beyond that, there's not really much you can speed up. This is the longest one out of the three by far. This is um, around three minutes long. And because waiting is a bit boring, I will show off a couple of tricks. Uh, first off here, there, there are two Marines. The left one is in a cycle. He approaches his right one and moves away again. And whenever he approaches the right marine, there is an invisible wall forming and I can jump and get launched up in the air like this. I could actually die if I hit the death ceiling here, so let's see. That's very high, I think I'm going to die. I don't think you're going to hit it. The existence barrier is uh, deloaded right now because no, of that I, one I, I bug that we never addressed. Oh, you did. <laughs> yeah, usually I don't die, but that was something I want to show off. Um, it backfired, but that's okay. That's uh, <laughs> yeah. But uh, that would have been a good time to uh, point out that there is no fall timer in uh, Halo 5 because normally in other Halo games you would have died. Um, and there is also an Easter egg here. If you push this machine's button 11 times, machine's buttons seem to be. There's going to be. Wait, that's nine. 11, okay. There's a soccer ball spawning. And while I try and go um, to score a goal, I will let Phobic explain some difference between patched and unpatched in this game, in the speedrun. So you probably heard us talk a lot about whole, oh, we run on patch and there's all these differences, or unpatched, I should say. What we mean by patched is the online, fully updated game that you can play multiplayer in and play online and match make. When we say unpatched, we're talking about the 1.0 disc copy of the game installed offline. And we run on the unpatched version of the game, just because of a few differences. Weapon balanced, AI balanced. For some reason, that soccer ball is silver on the patched version. Nobody knows why. There's also um, coordinates, I think, is another uh, big one. We use right, that for a trick at the end of the game. Up. For some reason, Patch up. does not have coordinates. I think that's because they changed the macros around a little bit on how you enable those. And what you're seeing Distro do now is a four second dialogue skip. It's This is new to GDQ. And this level is still an auto scroller even with all uh, overlapping dialogue here. And yeah. I think we have time for one or two donations. I can do that for you. We've got $117 from Nam Namau, who says 117 hype train. Let's go. I mean, if y'all can all donate $117, I mean, if this is within your means, go right ahead. We can hit 2 million pretty soon. In fact, we've got $117 from, oh, Master Chief, who says, I need a speed run of Halo Infinite next year. Finish the fight against cancer. Well, thanks, Master Chief. I think we have time for one more. Sure. We've got $11.70. I see what you did there. Trip from Trip to Mains. Always happy to see a Halo run at GDQ. Halo was a huge part of my younger years, and I've recently rekindled my love for the series by rounding up old and new friends to play the latest game. Shout out to Distro and his mad skills. 
finish the fight. All right, thank you very much. This level is called Unconfirmed. You just saw me drop out of the Pelican. and the beginning of the level has a bunch of uh, movement, so not very interesting, but there's a really cool trick coming up in around 20 seconds from now, so this is a good time to pay attention. First, I stay on the left here because there's a bunch of enemies to my right and in the middle. But there's also a second reason for being on the left, because if I'm fast enough and get up there, let's see... I can use that pelican you just saw as a bridge. Yep, that's a thing. I just jump on it. And I go to the next level of the structure. What this does is it skips an enemy load trigger, um, which allows me to pick up the rocket launcher. And I will need that for a clear coming up, so I will hand over the commentary to Phobic because I will have to focus. Okay, so this clear can get out of control really easily. What Distro is going to try and do is spawn kill these knights as fast as possible. Two rockets, few VR shots, and then when that second knight opens up his mask, he can just headshot that knight in the head. Few crawlers on cleanup. This fight's going good already. When we have enough enemies dead, we're going to get some soldiers spawning in here. Two rockets on them. And we should be able to backsmack a captain coming in here. Take his little suppressor, shoot a few watchers, and then deal with the captain on the other side. Teammates are being quite useless in shooting that watcher, I have to say. And the watcher is being annoying on purpose. Ooh, a little bit of a risky spot. Distro purposely taking it slow. System's black. Need My team is supposed to kill the yes. watcher. <laughs> yeah, the really watcher is trolling lucky. us. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in this run today. I mean, it's fine. Um, it's legendary. Things can happen, but it's uh, a bit scary right now. Yeah, so when stuff doesn't go right, it can go very wrong in that clear. Overall, I would say it's a pretty okay clear, even for a uh, marathon run. Uh, and we have 40 seconds for donations while we wait for dialogue. I gotcha. We got $10 from Mac and Gak. Second donation of the event had to do it during Halo 5 since Halo has brought us closer as a couple. This donation is in honor of my mother, Lori, who died in 2002 of a cancer that is easily preventable now. Let's destroy cancer like Distro will destroy many wardens. And we've got $5 from Lollipop OMG. Good luck to my favorite bistro. Thank you very much. So there is a route change coming up um, compared to the last GDQ in 2018 that I ran at. If you remember, I cleared every enemy here, which includes a bunch of Bane rifle soldiers, which are pretty much enemy snipers, and they can one-hit kill you on Legendary if you get a clear shot on you. There's a bunch of trollers. But there's a new trick coming up here, which is a bit finicky, so let's see if I can get it. They can boost into this geometry, and... Wow, that's an unlucky death. That's that is very <laughs> unlucky. I don't know what's happening today, that's very interesting. But you're, usually they don't shoot you when you get it first try, that's very rare. Uh, but we can do it again. So I boost into the geometry, it launches upwards and it allows me to go out of bounds. Let's see. Uh, saved it. There we go. So I would say this still saved uh, time over the old strat. And I'm over destruction now and out of bounds and it's time to go inbounds again. I will take it a little bit slow so I can get the checkpoint, hopefully. Which I didn't get, okay. So this is um, a room with a ton of enemies. And uh, they're mostly on the middle, in the middle of the room, on the right uh, side, so I stay on the left. And there's a bunch of enemies spawning at the end of the very strong, so I try, just try to go as quickly as I can. Before they can spawn in and kill me, pretty much. Let's see. Okay. Yeah, there was a knight with an incineration cannon, which is a very strong weapon. And you see me zigzag here because sometimes a banner rifle soldier tracks you and can shoot you down. And um, we do, do a cool 360 round slide here uh, for fun. And there is a very obvious skip here. There's an elevator, but it turns out and goes downwards. And, you know, in Halo 5, you can round pound down. And uh, the load trigger is there, which is amazing. And we just skip the right and entering now. Um, into the Warden fight, and I will hand over the commentary to Phobic. Well, we have our first Warden here. He is our friend, actually, uh, secretly. He saves time for us later on. Right now, he's in a little bit of an animation. We're going to have to wait for that to be over so that we can damage him. Dishra's just going to come behind her, 
and shotgun him a few times in the back. If we do enough damage to him, he'll just keep being stunned like so. Easy kill. Warden does have a few abilities uh, to him. He has a death ball ability. He can send at you that tracks you, a laser beam, as well as a sword attack. You saw none of that there because, well, he just got spawn killed. In the meantime, we are waiting for dialogue again and for this door to open for us. Could I get a donation to in here? I've always got you covered. We've got $50 from Ungoy comms operator Glibnub, who says, I think Spartan Locke is a better Spartan than Master Chief. Hyperius agrees. Chat, are we Team Locke or Team Chief? I don't, I need y'all to decide. Y'all tell me. In, in donation form, please. Okay, uh, Distro's going to save and quit here. Uh, normally, you're not allowed to do that, but because the mission is over and there's a five-minute unskippable cutscene, we just say, screw it, we leave, and start up the next mission. It's a lot more simple. As well as due to Halo 5's timing, we do RTA minus loads. So... Yeah, coming up is evacuation. You see me sprint jump and thrust right away. It actually skipped the load trigger, but I will explain what that does very soon. But first, I appoint once into the, to the gun goose here and then twice to the uh, Gauss Hawk. And this is an air manipulation because if done correctly, I should get Tanaka on the passenger seat and Buck on the back. I want Tanaka on the passenger seat because she has a long range precision weapon and she's the only one in the team who does, so uh, the DMR. She will do a lot of damage with headshots uh, um, to soldiers later on. And I want Buck on the back because I don't want Vale in the Hawk because if she dies, uh, there's a dialogue that doesn't work later on, but we can maybe mention that again later when that happens. And uh, I mentioned the trigger that I skipped. In the casual playthrough, over here you would have to fight a bunch of enemies or try to drive past them, but they're very strong. There would be crawlers at the ramp that I just um, drew, drove over. There's a Hawk that shoots you. There's a Phaeton, which is a flying vehicle that can instantly destroy you in Legendary if it has a clear shot on you. And a bunch of other soldiers. Also here, there's nothing now. That's because I skipped the trigger at the very beginning. And we have time for one quick donation before I enter the next clear, and I will hand over the commentary to Phobic after that. Sure, sure, sure. We've got $100 from DMJ654. Halo 5 is a great speedrun to watch. Can't wait to see what happens with Halo Infinite runs by the time SGDQ comes around. I always tell people that Halo Infinite's closer to Zelda than Skyrim when it comes to the open world, so my money here goes to Majora's Mask for the Zelda 3DS bid war. And you guys can donate for that right now. It's coming in pretty close, last I checked. Governor Sloan, we need access to the space elevator. So in classic Halo fashion, Distro is just going to get the hog all the way into the end fight here. A Gauss Hog is going to be extremely useful here. We're just going to mark enemies, and Buck on the back here is going to shoot for us. Uh, Tanaka deciding to get out uh, sporadically for whatever reason. We're just going to get her back in. That can sometimes happen. We're going to shoot some more enemies on the left here. And then hopefully Distro has shot the captain. Yeah, I see his turret on the ground. There is a splinter turret captain here. He can be fairly deadly if we don't get him, as well as that soldier can be deadly because he can get on the rocket turret. Uh, Buck, please uh, shoot him before we have a disaster. <laughs> oh my lord. Yeah, this is what you, uh, this is GDQ like. The, the AI is a do this all the time and troll us. Anywho, the gesture's gonna move up, spawn in some snipers, and he is gonna headshot those guys before they can do really any damage or get away. He'll go to the front of the building eventually. I've never seen him hide behind that rocket turret like that before. I don't know what this run is right now, but it's pretty funny. <laughs> oh my. Enemies think, are getting away on him. Did I get a checkpoint, Phobic? Did you see it? Uh, you should have, because I didn't see it, though. I'm, I'm not going to risk it. it. Okay, it'll be fine. I got yeah. the sniper. Okay, so Distro's hugging the left-hand side here to watch out for a Gov's turn on the top left. Um... It seems that he took so long that the soldiers decide not to get on the Gauss turret for whatever reason. Gets a freebie here. He moves forward some more and pre-nades some crawlers that are going to try and rush us. Once it's clear enough here, we are going to try and rush the hill. Bail, you shouldn't be in the hog. Uh, Disha is going up to rush the hill now. We have a Hydra launcher soldier right there that we're going to want to kill. He's dead. That's good. That's always good. He can do some pretty bad damage. Oh no. Uh, Vale is dead. Uh, this could lose us some time if she does die. 
Um, yeah, I think that's a catchy phrase, but that's never happened before is, I think, the summary of this run. <laughs> that, this is a weird run, I have to admit. Even weirder than our practice. I mean, this is legendary, but it's normally not like this. I, mean, I don't mind because you can see... Um, because it's legendary, this is a marathon and uh, things can go wrong, so it's nice that you can see that sometimes things don't go right. And that's uh, what I want to mention, the adaptation that I have to do, a lot of improvisation. Um, that's also a skill you have to have to, you know, be able to get a good time on Legendary. And um, just saw me pick up the Gauss Hawk while that door was closing. Um, and when the door closes, you can teleport it back inside. And I took the Gauss Hawk because in the next clear, there is a ton of Watchers and Soldiers, and I can quickly take out the Watchers with the Gauss Hawk here. Which is nice, and while I clear the enemies, uh, I think we have time for a few donations. I got you covered. Twenty-five dollars from Doctor Z O M G PhD. A lot of letters. Halo hype. Good luck to the runner, and let's see some advanced mobility. Spartan charging thrusters. The works. And we've got twenty-five dollars from Tobias. Greetings from the three four three playtest team. Love getting to see our games getting completely busted in ways I've never seen before, and hoping to see Infinite get the same treatment in future GDQs. Thanks to GDQ and our amazing speedrunning community for making that guy Halo go fast for a great cause. Also, shout out to my wife Maris for shouting me out in her donation. Love you, babe. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, over here, there's still some crawlers left. These sometimes tend to hide. And the soldier, but once... Wait, there's not a crawler. Okay, once everything is dead, I can hit the button. There we go, back smack. Uh, that should be all. Okay. Now we can continue. I will do a bit of weapon management. I will get the railgun, which is a really strong weapon. And pick up the DMR, which is useful for the upcoming clears. And uh, the rest of the level is pretty much a lot of spawn killing, so I'm going to set up for that. I unfortunately only have one splinter grenade. There's a second one here, if I can get it quickly. But I will pretty much just try to nade spam enemies as they spawn in for the next section. And while I go through the next tier, I think we have time for a donation or two. Cool, cool, cool. Twenty dollars from the Infinite Egg. Master Chief is so much better than Locke. He's the classic Coke to Locke's new Coke. Okay, all right. Shots fired. Take that, Locke lovers. Twenty-five dollars from Captain Ash. A good buddy of mine and I participated in a Halo 1 LAN tournament when I was in junior college and were fortunate enough to be able to team up with two super nice guys who turned out to be utterly amazing at Halo. Our team ultimately won the tournament and was given first choice at prizes on offer. That and other experiences while playing the original Halo are why I fondly remember it to this day. Best of luck to Distro during his run. Thank you very much. I'm setting up for another clear, and you see me melee and jump around a lot. This is to delay a checkpoint, because normally I will get the checkpoint at the beginning of the dialogue, but I want it at the end of it, so if I die, it's a short revert. I got a bit unlucky with the nade count, but I tried to save it. Normally we would have uh, two splinter grenades. I saw my teammates to go in a spot where they can easily spawn kill some enemies, hopefully, or do a lot of damage at least. Um, and I set up some nades to especially get rid of the Hydro Launcher. Soldier, and... Um, there's another guy with a the turret there that I just backsmacked, and then the second guy with the turret, which I will take out with another turret. Um, yes, and while I do go for this clear, I think we have time for one more donation. We've got $75 from Jonathan. I'm not sure which is worth, Prometheans or Flood. But you know what would be terrible? Crossovers. What's worse? Flood-infested Zerg, or Zerg-infested Flood. Either way, sounds like a bad time. I, I'm sure you can find that fanfiction somewhere. Please. We've we have got time $10. For one more. Sure. $10 from Hyperfear, who says, Halo, Halo, Halo! Less than three. Cancer is kind of like the flood, and I hope we can rid this planet of it soon. I agree, Hyperfear. All right, so coming up are three knights. Um, there's a white knight always spawning here, and then two randomly spawning black knights. I will see if I can spot him quickly. I saw one on the left. Uh, this white knight dropped the incineration cannon, which is a power weapon. Ah, they're both here, that's nice. Let's see. I will let my teammates handle the person that I weakened a lot. Hopefully they can get it, there we go. And now the second one. There we go. 
Uh, you see, saw me shoot his side core, which makes him rage, and then he exposes his face, and then you can shoot the face, and he dies. And we have time for one quick donation again before the end of the level. Absolutely. We've got $250 from One More Time, who says, got to throw down some money for a good cause. As a nurse, preventative measures in medicine is incredibly important. And I'm glad GDQ is supporting a great organization such as the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Thank you so much, Michael, for your donation. All right, so coming up is a section which I like in the speedrun because it sh highlights the new movement tech compared to previous Halo games pretty well. This is the jungle gym. First I have to find the door. Ah, there it is. Okay, so this is uh, the jungle gym. You see a lot of uh, sprinting, frosting, clambering, etc. And we just try to do a parkour pretty much as quickly as we can with the fastest known route. In the casual play, for if you take another route, you will probably have to fight some Phaetons, uh, which um, I mentioned before about uh, flying enemy ships uh, that can pretty much instantly kill you if they get a clear shot. And uh, we are approaching the end of the level. There are some waves that will knock you down, but it turns out if you stay on the left here, uh, you don't get knocked down. And now the end of the level is on the timer, so I can just ground pump down or do anything I want. It looks silly, but uh, the mission is on the timer anyway, so it doesn't matter. Coming up is a level called Reunion, which is um, one of the cooler ones, in my opinion, in the speedrun. Because it's quite flashy, but you will see what I'm talking about very soon after this cutscene. So there's an elevator right there in the casual playthrough, and it turns out you can skip it by just clambering up here and going out of once the structure. And this skips a long elevator ride. Um, you have to wait for it for dialogue and then for it to go down. And we, now we're walking on air. You might wonder, well, how is it impossible? That doesn't make sense. Well, the thing is, normally you're below where I am right now. And this floor is actually a ceiling that is preventing you from going out of bounds. But we're going out of bounds so early that the developers didn't anticipate that. So now the ceiling is a floor. And we drop back inbounds. Um, in the next section, there are a bunch of enemies in the middle of the section there. So I stay on the left. And I will approach a uh, Sniper Jackal. If he gets a headshot on me, he will one-hit kill me. If not, he will damage me a lot. In the patched version, they actually one-hit kill you every time if they hit you. But let's see how it goes. There's also a Phantom that can shoot me. And a Fear Rod Grunt, which uh, can one-hit kill me, which you saw on Blue Team before. Whoop. That's a bit unfortunate, but I didn't die, so that's good. And uh, there is an Elite on the turret, and I chuck a nade to get him out of there while I go pick up a sword here. And um, I just pass, um, go around the section, and then there is a sniper jackal, a carbine jackal, who can do a lot of damage on you, so I take him out. And I ignore the enemies on the right, and I just try to survive by spot and charging through that wall. And now, coming up, is a really cool skip. Instead of clearing every single enemy on my right that you see there, and there's a lot of them. You can actually use this phantom as a bridge to go to the next section. And we're skipping a second button on the elevator ride uh, behind, behind this door. You would have to clear all the enemies there and then the door opens. And that takes minutes on Legendary. We skip all of that. And um, after a bit of dialogue, there will be a light bridge spawning. And I will enter a mid-level cutscene. I will hand over the commentary to Phobic after the cutscene, but we have time for one donation. You covered. We've got $20 from Faulty Mentality. Watching this run takes me back to going to the midnight release for Halo 5 back when those were a thing. An extra $10 is waiting if the host does the Halo Gregorian chants. Well, uh, luckily I spent time in a monastery, so I'll give him my best shot. <laughs> and then you finish the fight. Thank you. So uh, this is Blue Team Tunnels. Uh, Blue Team Tunnels, what am I thinking? This is Reunion Tunnels. And uh, wait here, we're just going to run past a whole bunch of enemies and mark a soldier so our teammates can distract them. Unfortunately, they didn't do that. Typically, teammates are following up right behind you, trying to chase you down and keep with you. And the enemies would prioritize them over you a lot of times. At the end of the tunnels here, we are going to have four soldier captains all using splinter turrets. If even one of these splinter turrets hits us, it's more than likely death for us. Got through that cleanly. 
Only a little bruised. Going to wait here for a checkpoint and riding up for a very big trick here. Warden, our friend from before, is going to help us save a little time. Right here, Distro's just going to distract him off to the side. D Warden's going to show him his back. Warden's going to come up to us and give us a little swoop. He doop. And we got it first try. Oh, yeah. That is what I like to see. All the way up in the air, cross over the bridge section. No need to do that entire area. We used to do that clear. No more. I think that saves like two minutes on Legendary 3 from an aisle perspective. All right. And uh, we are on the third button here. Unfortunately, we do have to press this button to load in the next area. And as you can see, how much time like pressing one of these buttons wastes in general. Skipping the previous two it did save quite a bit of time on this level. And I will hand over the commentary to Distro here for the ending section. Uh, just to elaborate on the big skip that we just did, it's completely random. You need the one to cooperate and do the right attack, and it kills a lot of runs. First try, doing a marathon is really lucky and really nice. Uh, that is kind of payback for the half, first half of the run, which went uh, <laughs> really unlucky, but I'm happy now. And over here, we have uh, the Phaeton section. For the first time, I mentioned it twice in the run already, but for the first time, you actually get to use it. There are two routes. You either go on foot or you take the Phaeton. Going on foot is way riskier and way slower, so the decision is very easy as a speedrunner. You take the Phaeton. Even as a casual player, just take the Phaeton. It's way faster and way easier. But yeah, this is some enemy um, gunship. We will talk more about the uh, offensive capabilities on later level. But first, we click through a wall. And now I have to be careful. I have to hit two triggers. One of them is next to that circle that you just saw, and the other one is the end of the level. And I believe I missed it, so I'm gonna go back. I will. Yep, hold on. To focus, because I could soft lock. That should work. Okay, there we go. So, what happened there is uh, that trigger that I just hit there. Um, it's necessary to spawn in the ending trigger of the level. And we're out of bounds with the Phaeton, and we just fly to where the ending trigger is. Even though the area is not loaded in, it looks silly, but it works. And coming up is Sol Sang Helios, which is uh, a really nice level, but at the beginning we have around half a minute of movement, so we have time for a few donations. We've got a lot of them coming in. 2117 from Sasquatch. Says, Distro, so glad to see you back at GDQ. Wishing you the best of luck. Love you, friend. Also, cancer blows. It can get the heck out of here. Thank you very much, Sasquatch. $50 from Turner. Huge love from me and the team at 343. Lots of us from the studio are tuned in. Incredible run so far. And we all can't wait for you to tear apart Infinite and future runs at GDQ. This show, are you going to run Infinite at a future GDQ? Is that the plan? <laughs> uh, I don't He's attempted to run at the GDQ, but uh, I I do run it. Okay, okay, all right. So over here, um, once again, we see on the left side. That's a common theme in this speedrun because there's a bunch of enemies to the middle and to the right, and um, we have to actually run past a bunch of enemies here that can shoot you. But I got super lucky; they didn't even look at me for some reason. So we just skip that section by just running past the enemies. And I do a little detour here to pick up the sword, so I can uh, again have the movement speed boost. And there are three jacks in the next section. If I'm fast, it's enough to take out two of them, so they're all free. And there's a skip coming up here. And there's a drop pod skip to, uh, uh, scripted to fall down. And it, I make it fall down on my head, like I position myself where it's falling down, and that results in a pressure launch, and I skip this uh, whole section where there would be a ton of enemies uh, that are completely overpowered, really. But I will let Phobic handle the rest of the commentary for this level. Amazing launch, Distro. Thank you. Really looked good. So, uh, yeah, about those enemies back there, Distro just skipped a ton of them. Especially there was supposed to be an elite with a few right at the door. Because we do that launch, we don't see them. Up ahead, we got a uh, clear here that we have to do. And then the level will be on an auto-scroller. Go and nade a few jackals, shoot the grunts at far, and then turn to our left quickly and sort an elite. Uh, getting plasma pistol here isn't always the best idea. Going to try and 
mark that elite to uh, die right now. Hopefully our teammates can help us here. Take him out. Once enough enemies are dead, we should get Spirit Inbound. That will drop off uh, two hunters for us, which we just did. I'm going to pick up a Plasma Caster here, shoot off its turret, and then spawn kill the hunters with some Plasma Caster shots here. Ooh, where's the second hunter? Oh. Second hunter decided to run away from the his friend here. Although we got him, we have a fuel rod as a backup. I am approaching your position. Going to pick our sword back up here and head out of bounds. This is a little bit of route change here. I'd say it was about two seconds optimally. Nothing terribly big. But what this allows us to do is it allows us to get in a wraith that's way over here. This wraith uh, is a different color. It's like a reddish color rather than a purple that normal wraiths are. This is called a Sword Wraith, and as I am concerned, it has more armor than a regular Wraith. Now that our uh, timer up is here, we get a whole bunch of enemies spawning in. We're just going to spawn kill them. Normally when we take the Mantis through here, uh, it does take a moment for this spirit to come in, but because we were already far enough into the clear, we can easily use the Wraith to splatter a whole bunch of enemies and shoot them. From here, we are going to be getting in a ghost. This is a sword ghost. So once again, a little bit more armor than uh, the regular ghost. Telling your teammates to get into the wraith. Hopefully they can help us uh, at the next door. Blow past a few enemies. And we are going to be swapping back into a wraith again. Up ahead, you'll notice another wraith. It's not purple or anything. It's uh, sort of like a off whitish blue color. This is the uh, uh, coven version of the wraith. It is called an ultra wraith. If we get hit by one of its shots, it's about getting like getting hit by four tank shots. And what you just saw there was Distro got boarded by the fuel rod elite. We do take a fairly risky strat when we do this, so it's normal to die there. But we will try that again. I tried to boost away, which makes the elite drop off, but um, the wraith was blocking me, so I couldn't do that, unfortunately. A bit unfortunate, but it's okay. Um, second try is still fine, I believe I would. Wow, uh, no, never mind. That's actually, I don't even know what killed me. What was that? Um, was that the ghost? I mean, they can do quite a few damage from behind. You didn't get hit by the Wraith. Nah, I've never seen that before, honestly, but Maybe the Plasma Caster Elite rushed? Because there is a Plasma Caster Elite, like, That's hiding possible. there. That's possible. Mm. Should have been smooth sailing, but once again, a bit unlucky. That's fine. Let's get the Arbiter out of there. Again, that's the beauty of Legendary. Sometimes it's just not nice to you, but uh, we'll try our best to, you know, yeah, yeah. keep this so one going. What we're generally trying to do here is clear the area so the door opens. Most of these Jackals have to die, as well as a few other enemies. Ooh, getting overcharged. Yeah, just don't risk the Wraith at this point. Yep. Okay, I have to be careful here. There we go. I need to kill a few more jackals to open the door. There we go. All right, door's opening. That means there's going to be a squad of grunts in front of him. Distro can shoot off a caster shot there, kill them, and head back over to another ghost. We swap. Uh, interesting. <laughs> did you see that? <laughs> kamikaze grunt. <laughs> did, did you see Why is there a kamikaze grunt? <laughs> no, what's happened is the... the Okay, no, that's actually way crazier what happened. It's actually, I've never seen that before. That's a common theme in this Did a grunt but... stick another grunt? The grunt sticked another grunt, and the other grunt ran away, <laughs> but accidentally into my ghost and instantly killed me, and I've never seen anything like that before. This okay. is, I can't even be mad because that's hilarious. I've never seen that. Okay, we're going to end the level here by just driving up to the Arbiter, ignoring him, not helping him, and just ending the level. We're on to the second auto-scroller of Halo 5. <sighs> we have a minute here for donations. There's not much going on in Alliance. We're thing. 
We've got $100 with an anonymous haiku who says, Annoying Hunter, Halo Time on the X-Bone, Out of Bound, Ground Pound. Thank you for your $100 anonymous donation and bringing some, some art to the stream. Got time for one more? Yep. $300 from Aaron Johnson. Always love watching GDQs live. Donating during the Halo 5 Legendary speedrun as a longtime Halo fan. Can't wait to see Halo Infinite on GDQ in the near future. One more. One more. $50 from Peanut153. Halo was one of the series that really got me into gaming. From the epic story of the original game to playing tag with gravity hammers and low gravity with friends in the third game. It's left me with memories that will stick with me for years to come. Good luck to all the runners, and let's finish the fight against cancer. Thank you so much, Peanut. All right, thank you for the donations. Keep them coming. It's for a great cause. And this is Enemy Lines. Uh, this is one of my favorite levels in the speedrun, maybe even the favorite one. That's because while it's relatively short compared to other levels, I would say, uh, it still has a lot of variety in it. The beginning is a bit of parkouring around past enemies. The casual playthrough, you will see an animation here with a big vehicle called the Kraken coming down and uh, lock starts shaking. And during that, you're invincible. But if you stay on the left in the speedrun, go fast, you don't get the animation, but you stay invincible for that duration. So I can't die, but now I can die again. If I get even shot once now, I would be dead. Okay, good. But yeah, I was invincible there for a few seconds. And there's a very nice skip here. There's a shield. Turns out you can just clamber on it and skip it. Isn't that cool? Now we get to the driving part. As I said, there's a bit of variety. We had a bit of parkouring, now driving. Um, there will be a bunch of suicide grunts to my left side. So I will make sure to stay on the right so they don't get me here. And I'm going to take the ghost to a section where I'm not supposed to take it. Uh, by holding right bumper on my controller scheme, I can make the ghost fly farther away, which you saw there twice. And um, yeah, this debris is supposed to prevent you from taking the ghost any further, but you know, speedrunners uh, like to break games, so we do it anyway. You just take the ghost to the next section like this. Now in this room, there's a bunch of enemies. I try to just zoom past them by staying on the left side. Um, there is a... Whoa! There is a flip. <laughs> no. Uh, there is a, a rave in the middle of the of this section. And a sniper. If I get unlucky, the sniper will get me. That usually doesn't happen. Let's see. Okay, yeah. Um, and the rave will try to shoot me, but it actually takes down the shield for me that I have to shoot down anyway. So it actually helps me in the process. Now over here, I have to get out to activate the button. And for the end of the level, I will hand over commentary to Phobic. So throughout the level, there's been this Kraken chasing us down. The Kraken's sort of like the Halo 3, Halo 2 Scarab sort of thing. It has a core on it as well that we're going to destroy. Up ahead here, the Kraken's going to set down for us. We're going to jump in a Phaeton, board it through a gun port, take out an Elite, blow up the core, and get out all within a few seconds. And hopefully our teammates cooperate up with us and don't get on the Kraken, because that could be bad. If our teammates get on the Kraken, they, it can cause something called slow Kraken, because what the devs did purposely in this game is made it so... Interesting death. Uh, made it so that if someone is on the Kraken, including a teammate, uh, the Kraken won't fall down to its death and do its animation. So it's a little uh, safety thing they programmed in. However, if everyone is off, the Kraken should instantly go down and die for us. There's the Elite that I was talking about. Open up this shield and stick that core. Get back on our Phaeton as fast as possible. Ooh, and that is fra fast Kraken, all right. Right here, Distro is going to get a new Phaeton for himself. Because that one's a little broken. And we are going to be taking this Phaeton into the end fight. What the devs did here was put a, how you say it, disintegration kind of field. If you drive your vehicle into the dis disintegration field and get out, your vehicle will instantly disappear. However, that area isn't very big, so we can park our Phaeton on the very end here, wait for our objective update, get back in, and fly into the facility with the Phaeton. Distro is going to be taking a little slow here just to hit a few triggers 
and then check the nade count. All right, he is going to be grabbing an ensign here and setting up for a few spawn kills. Press a button. This will start a timer that enemies will spawn on. Throw a nade there, ensign this guy, and stick him. That should instantly kill the knight. A few more enemies that we can blow up here, and we can get back in our Phaeton. Uh, you probably also noticed your, his teammates have Phaetons as well. This is not actually a good thing. Teammates can sometimes get out of Phaetons, block your line of sight, or do a whole bunch of other stuff. As well as if they do get out of the Phaetons, the uh, soldiers here can get in them and do a lot of damage to you. Thankfully, teammates are staying in them. A few of the offensive capabilities of the Phaeton here. It is a Promethean gunship that has a chain gun as well as a rocket launcher. This show is using the rocket launcher on cooldown while trying to manage the heat on his chain gun. And with that, we are done this clear. Just need a zoop out here. That's the end of that level. We are on to Before the Storm, which is the third and final auto-scroller of Halo 5. We do have to wait through a little bit of a cutscene though because we can't skip it immediately, so about a minute and a half donation dish. I got you covered. We've got $10 from Faulty Mentality. Here's the extra 10 bucks for the incredible chanting. Good luck and go fast. Well, thank you, Faulty Mentality. We've got $250 coming in from Andrea Sostar. So excited to donate to a good cause in honor of my uncle, who was diagnosed with cancer last year. I'm also super glad to be able to donate during a Halo run. I can't wait for you all to give the same treatment to Infinite and skip all of the work I did. <laughs> Thank you, Andrea. We've got $20 from an anonymous donator. Super pumped that this event already raised $1 million for such a great cause. I'm excited for the Zelda 3DS run tonight. I know it'll be great either way, but I'm hoping for Ocarina of Time. Well, last I checked, let's take a look. We are at Ocarina of Time is at 13,000, while Majora's Mask is at 26,000. That's kind of a big gap. You've only got a few games to get in if you really want to see Ocarina of Time get played tonight. Got time for more? One more, yep. yes. Okay. $25 from Bread Broker, who just says, Grilling Spree, Grilling Frenzy, Grill Tracular. Okay, thank you, Bread Broker. If there's a quick one, we have time for one more. There's a lot of them. $25 from Shimmer Scroll. My brothers and I spent, I don't know how many hours playing and replaying Majora's Mask. It's by far our favorite Zelda installment, and I can't wait to see it get thoroughly broken. Thank you very much. Let's make a good jump. Like Alright, so this level is called Battle Snion. It's very combat heavy. We start right off inside of a clear. But it turns out you can go up here and then ground pound through an invisible barrier here and go out of bounds. There we go, I got it. And um, I will follow this half circle and um, then go inbounds again here. I have to backtrack a tiny bit because there is a low trigger here that I have to hit. There we go. And now in the next room, there's a bunch of enemies, including a few rod grunts. Um, it is possible to die here if you get unlucky. But let's see how this goes. I should, I should also know this section of Tori is in the speedrun for, you know, for not giving you checkpoints for up to three minutes. So dying here would be a bit scary. But I will try my... I actually got a checkpoint. That's amazing. This run is weird. <laughs> Yeah, that, that that should happen. That's not natural. <laughs> All right, so in the next room, there's an anti-air, um, an AI, AI gun here, and um, I can shoot its battery down, which will destroy it. And now I go to this room to be safe, and I will hand over commentary to Furby because there's a big clear coming up, and it's one of the more difficult ones. Currently, we're waiting for a door to open on our left. There's going to be a fuel rod elite uh, rushing through it. We're going to hopefully be able to sneak by him and then quickly go out of his line of sight so he doesn't turn around and shoot us. There's the door. Pass the elite, and we are through. He didn't notice us at all. That's good. And this is the triple AA gun clear. We only have to destroy two of the three turrets, though. Uh, normally, you have to destroy all three. However, because we got out of bounds at the very beginning, we should only have to destroy two of them. As you can see, Distro is using his Fuel Rod here to weaken up some elites, as well as picking off the grunts with his BR. There's 
one cannon, and that second cannon down, that means we did get the skip. We'll only have to destroy two of the three cannons, which is always good. Sneaky Grunt, right behind us. A few more enemies spawning in across. Not all enemies initially spawned in this clear. We do need to wait for some more to spawn in. We should be able to stick this cannon. Just need to clean up the last few enemies here that are standing around. We are waiting for phantoms to spawn in uh, between the little crack there on Distro's left. Uh, when he does kill enough enemies, they should spawn in and we should get some dialogue that says friendly phantoms. Anything you'd like uh, to add, Distro? I think I have to take out one more elite. Normally, you have to focus on the grunts here. They're... they're okay, they're, they're just oh, easy there you go. I got it finally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, A few okay. hidden grunts in the back. No worries. So once we get friendly phantoms, this is going to grab a plasma pistol here, overcharge it, overcharge one elite, stick the other, and we get two free sword pickups here. Only going to need one of them. Ooh, eight shots. That's actually really good. And now Distro is going to be setting up for a new skip here. We're going to be skipping the entire elevator here. Saves about 30 seconds. Definitely worth waiting for a checkpoint for, especially for marathon purposes. When he does get that checkpoint, he is going to run out over the abyss, drop down, stabilize to stop himself, turn around, thruster back inwards, and then ground pound on the lower platform. So stabilize, thruster over, and then ground pound back in. Normally, we have to wait for the ship to spawn in here, but because Distro waited so long, we can just easily go for the freeze here. And I will hand over commentary for the Undersea to Distro. Alright, thank you, Phobic. This is the Undercity of Atlas and Ion. Um, once again, we just run past a lot of enemies. Um, they are pretty strong, so sometimes they get unlucky and die, but that shouldn't happen with the path that I take. There were a bunch of enemies to my left. Now I see on the left there's a bunch of enemies to my right. Um, there's a Plasma Castle Elite I just uh, bypassed. Now there's a Turret Elite to my right, but I just did some movement tech to get across that gap. And I feel like this section is one of the funnest ones in the speedrun for me, just because the movement is so much fun. Yeah, I will make sure not to jump and not to go too fast so I can get a checkpoint. And I did not get it, that's not good. But, um, now we have to hope to get lucky. There is a sniper in the back that can sometimes shoot you. Hopefully that won't happen now because of the long revert. And coming up is um, our two hunters. They scripted to get, out, uh, get up in a threatening way. We actually kind of cheese that by just sorting them before they can get up and attack us. We just hit them in the back with a sword like this. And after they're dead, there's an elevator door opening after a certain time has elapsed. And um, there's three grunts there, I just feel rod cannon them, and then I push the button. I make sure to strafe here because it's an invisible elite that likes to throw plasma um, grenades. And you will see me assign the fuel rod cannon to one of my teammates. Normally you would have up to three here, but uh, that didn't work out that well, I have only one. But that's okay, I'll try my best with this. And if you remember the run from 2018 that I did, I actually attempted the skip here that I missed. So, now is the time to redeem myself, four years later. But first, let me explain. The way that animations work in Halo 5 is that when two happen simultaneously, they cancel each other out. Um, I'm going to go into the next section here, and you see two crawlers. I will assassinate one of them while another, uh, while another animation is playing with the phantom crashing and the bridge getting destroyed as the Guardian is rising. And I got it this time, thankfully. Now uh, I was supposed to go for an animation there and I can't move for a few seconds while this bridge gets destroyed, but... Yeah, everything looks weird now. I missed that during the last GDQ, I'm glad I got it now. Um, so if I see on the right here, I also give another animation where Locke would fall, be falling down the bridge and his teammates get him up. Picking up the Plasma Caster here, which is a very strong weapon and very convenient for the upcoming clear. And that clear is one of the hardest ones in the game, so I will have to focus and hand over the commentary to Phobic again. Alright, so in this clear, there are multiple waves of Promethean enemies there that we slowly try and push back. 
Kishra is going to pick up a carbine here. We cut up a watcher and get him to panic. That will make it so that the watcher doesn't try and pick up his nades or plasma caster shots, which watchers technically typically like to do. You'll also notice that Distro is overcharging his plasma caster, shooting at the soldiers, and then trying to pick up headshots with his carbine. Going to overcharge the captain here. He clearly did not like that, and he is phasing away from us. We're going to hope he's cooperative here. All right. Once he's dead, we can move up along the right-hand side here and go for an incineration cannon. Now, there will be two sets of four soldiers each spawning for a total of eight soldiers. Once we have enough enemies dead, they will spawn in. Hopefully, uh, if we get this, we will be able to use the incineration cannon to blow up all eight of the soldiers. So there's the first spawn. We're going to shoot one at them. The second one, fairly cooperative actually, and we should have at least got seven soldiers there with the, just two incineration shots. Distro using in our incineration shot to clean up, back smack a captain that spawns in here, and then, oh okay, both of those soldiers decide to pile on to each other, giving us another free kill. Finally spawning a warden here, once warden dies the level should end. We're going to spam our plasma caster shots at him try and weaken him up as well as mark him. Uh, normally teammates aren't very good but because we have one fuel rod uh, we should be able to use that to help us out. And with that, that is the end of Battle of Sinion. We will be uh, moving on to Genesis now. That was a really clean end fight destroy I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> I got a bit lucky though. <laughs> I, I, I see. <laughs> and uh, here is Genesis. Uh, this section here I know is uh, very well praised amongst uh, the general community, or one of the favorite sections of it. We have a little perspective change shift here at the beginning of Genesis. We're not looking forward into the horizon, we're actually looking down straight at the ground. So we have like some sort of quote unquote magnetic boots going on right now, and we're falling down the side of the Guardian. If we jump, we get a, like, a little bit of a momentum boost. Gravity is helping us pull us down towards itself, and that's where we have to get. So Distro will be trying to maintain air time for as long as possible. We're going to jump over the first set of enemies here, and then try and kill some on the second set. Distro does have a little frame rate loss here, uh, due to the Xbox that he's using. Although, if everything goes right, he should be able to make it past these enemies here. Last set of enemies up ahead. Ooh, and they're all dead, nice. And we are going to have another perspective change shift here while we transfer all the way to the ground. Uh, Distro, do you want to take over from here? Sure, thank you, Phobic. So. If you remember last GDQ again uh, in 2018, um, we took the elevator in, well, in around 10 seconds from now, but we skip it this time. New GDQ, new skip. It turns out you can climb all the way up here. And this is a bit finicky, so I have to focus a little bit. But you can uh, climb onto this platform, and then tricky clamber up here. Hopefully I can get it, but I missed it. Well, I can do a backup here. Give me a second. Dup, dup, dup. There we go, perfect. Now we'll slide across the structure and try to make my way up here. There we go. And now I can thrust backwards um, to not hit an invisible barrier. And I can ground pound my way down. Now I crouch in the corner here and wait um, to hit the loading trigger, which is required to continue the level, but also to get a checkpoint. I should have gotten the checkpoint, hopefully. But this run has been really weird, so I'm a bit scared. <laughs> but yeah, coming up is a really cool trick. Um, but first I have to survive a bunch of fire, enemy fire. I just try to make my way with the ghost up until the middle platform here. Let's see. Hopefully not dying. But yeah, I have to get up here on this metal ledge. And I will shoot the grunt in the turret because he can be annoying and sometimes kill you later on. And we serve a phantom! Yes, that's a really cool trick, I know. I'm very excited for to show off this one. And because one phantom isn't cool enough, we're actually going to serve the second one as well. Yeah, how cool is that? Look at that. 
And um, this is very convenient on Legendary because below me are a ton of really strong enemies and you have to wait for a door to open. But now we're just surfing by. We don't need care in the world. There we go. And now we ground pump back inbounds. Really cool licking skip. I also hit the low trigger in mid-air. Um, you just saw the ghost load in. That's, that means I hit the trigger correctly. And the Master Chief is there. Because the ghost is fast, I'm going to enter it. And uh, I have to backtrack a tiny bit because there's a trigger I have to hit to continue. And this trigger will spawn in a ton of enemies. These enemies are all really strong. So I will basically just try to yolo my way through. There's a, quite a decent amount of randomness here. I went a bit slow to... Um, recharge a bit of the booster on the Ghost. And in the casual playfield, you're supposed to wait for a Light Witch here, but it turns out you can just boost off this ramp and get across. That was first try, that's really nice. Um, got lucky again for once. And there's a really cool trick coming up, and I'm going to let Phobi handle that. This is about to pull a disappearing act on you guys here. We've routed no weapons into this. We have two Wardens to fight ahead. And we got only a Ghost to our name. So, Distro's going to hop out here and disappear. He's a ghost driving a ghost, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, well, no, he's not actually a ghost right now. His uh, player model is suspended way up in the skybox somewhere. So if it looks like the enemies are confused on where Distro is, they quite frankly are. They're staring into the sky, trying to shoot him if they can. Uh, for the technical people here, this is takes your global coordinates and sets it to your local coordinates in respect to the ghost. I have an entire spreadsheet dedicated to this. Uh, ghost Ghost, uh, what we're doing right here, also has a second name, Lunge Warp. We'll get into the Lunge Warp property later on. Uh, Lunge Warp is used in the infinite speedrun. We also use it here, however in a slightly different manner. With both Wardens dead, Distro can head to the end here and jump out of the Ghost to end the level. And we are on to breaking, coming up on the second last level here. Uh, can we get some donations while the Warden has a few words with us? I can give you exactly what you need. We got that 117 train coming in. $117 from Nebra. Good luck on the run, Distro, and show those Guardians who's boss. And another you, $117 uh, from Rogue Angel. Did someone say $117 donation change? Yes, we did. Bring it in. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. I didn't think We've got a $10 haiku from Digital Ignorance who says, Halo 5 speed run. I never seen that before. What a run it was. Can I get one quick one really quick? Go. $10 from the stuck grunt that killed you, who just says, sup. <laughs> sup. Sup. <laughs> so, Distro's going to uh, kill the lead crawler here. That's the white crawler. Going to cause uh, these miners to panic, allowing them to run past and move up on the clear up here. We're going to double nade some of these crawlers here to kill them. And then attempt to take out this knight as fast as possible before the watchers show up. Nice headshot. That uh, knight just dropped an incineration cannon. If it is safe, Distro will try and go out and grab that incineration cannon. It is particularly useful in this clear, mostly for the soldiers. Killing off the last watcher there. So always good. The second knight decides to offer himself up here. Ooh, and we got two incineration cannons now. That is actually really good. Going to weaken up a soldier here. Distro's going to risk it here. Pick up the incineration cannon and start overcharging it on these soldiers here. Doesn't actually seem to be that much left given how much work he's already put into this clear. I should have mentioned this before it happens. Uh, sometimes the crawler's AI break here and we get something called a troll crawler. Uh, thankfully we didn't get that. And the troll crawler usually stays way back there and we have to run back for it. Right now, uh, we finally got the door open. Distro's going to grab himself an incineration cannon and do a little bit of weapon management. Uh, and with that, we are sitting on a gondola not doing much. Can we get a few donations, please? Yeah, $25 from Adam the Feverish. 
Sick run, Distro. Putting my donation to unlocking the RE Village run so because I know everybody is clamoring so to see that. To see uh, we are only $8,000 into the 170000 needed to unlock RE Village, but I know you're going to get it. I believe in you, chat. And we've got $5 from Matt, who says, I had never heard of Halo until watching this amazing speedrun, so much that I just purchased a PS4 just to play Halo. Thanks, GDQ. Um, I have bad news for you, Matt. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> All right, so coming up is another route change compared to the previous GDQ. Um, there is a tower section coming up. Well, we call it a, power, a tower section, but I'm going to do a, a cool trick first. There's invisible floor here, and I will position myself between the gondola and this metal platform. And if done correctly, the gondola will push me inside and uh, launch me upwards like that. It's a pressure launch. And this section is actually very interesting, but we'll get into that in a few seconds. First, I make sure to clear enough enemies so I don't die later on, because I will have to try to make my way past there later. Uh, there we go. There's a bunch of crows on the ramp here too that I should take down. I got a nice checkpoint. That's nice to see. Another crawler down there. Okay. So, to get past this section, what you have to do is hit four triggers consecutively. The first one I just hit at the bottom of the ramp there. The second one is up here. And this one actually spawns a lot of crawlers in the middle section here. But they're going to kill me. So I hit the third trigger quickly in the corner there and I go back down. And um, we go back up again. Look at that. We are on the last level again. And we hit the fourth trigger, which is around the corner there, as we just hit. And this spawns in four enemies. And these are actually the only ones that have to die to continue. But in Legendary, you take out the previous one so um, you don't die instantly pretty much. It would be way too risky otherwise. Or almost impossible even. But yeah, we take out the focus beam turret. I'm going to pick up some uh, a suppressor here. And there's a big clear coming up, so I will let Phobic handle that one. All right. So in this next clear, we got a few interesting enemies here. We have two snipers, three splinter turret captains, two watchers, and a whole bunch of soldiers. I think like eight in total. What Distro is going to do here is shoot the two snipers, move over to the left here, kill the soldier that comes underneath, and then kill the captain up top. This will allow him to go into this little cubby hole here, and we should be safe from the splinter turret captains in here. Teammates not being very useful as always, having to res them. Distro's using a 1-2 combo here with the bolt shot, trying to weaken up the soldiers to take off their armor with the uh, bolt shot, and then finishing them off with the light, light, uh, light rifle. A few more soldiers. Ooh, Captain decided to visit us down here. Free kill. Also, I've never uh, seen so many soldiers drop down. This is again yeah, one of the I've never seen before. That's kind of cool. Usually they don't drop down that much. I've noticed quite a few. Uh, now that the area is clear, Distro is going to pick up the Promethean Sniper Rifle. This is the binary rifle. And we're just going to essentially buzz all these soldiers with it. It's uh, sort of like a continuous fire thing, like that. And we should have one more captain to the left after this guy and be done with this section. From here, Distro is just going to jump on the, the uh, gondola. Where'd this guy come from? Anyways, uh, Distro is going to jump on the uh, gondola from here, uh, activate it, do a little bit of weapon management to grab himself a scatter shot and kill his teammates. He kills his teammates here because teammates on moving platforms isn't a good combination. If you've ever seen uh, any videos of it, teammates can actually send themselves flying or jiggle you around a whole bunch. And I think we have our last donation section here. Right, if you still in the tank, we've got a lot of the 117 train coming in. $117 from Troy. Thanks to the runners and support team for another great GDQ. Keep up the amazing work. And we've got $511.70 from Code Alpha who says my dad was diagnosed with stage four throat cancer last month and halo has been a wonderful distraction for me while staying with him through treatments thank you gdq for all that you do all right so we are attempting a big skip now let's see you have to line up for it it's a bit tricky for the checkpoint 
I will squeeze my, uh, myself between the gondola and the metal platform, which will launch me upwards like this. And I can land on an invisible floor. And we skip this whole room you see down there. It doesn't look very threatening, but when you actually go there, there's a low trigger for a ton of enemies. Um, they're really strong. There are so many. This easily skips minutes, I would say. And um, coming up is the triple one fight. The infamous triple one fight. For those who have played the game casually, you might have some uh, not so fond memories of this section. But um, as it turns out, when you spawn them in, you can just clamber up here and go to the end. The ending trigger is already there, so we can just skip the triple one fight. So for those who went through the pain, I'm sorry, but yeah, there is a skip here. A very easy one too. So I would like to mention, thank you very much for the 117 donation train. You guys are amazing. And uh, we're entering the last level called Guardians. And um, we start right away. In the casual playthrough, you would have to listen to dialogue until the door opens, but it turns out you can just drop for the floor here. <laughs> I know that looks silly, but it works. Then we ground pound. This is also way, way more difficult than it looks because there's a huge death barrier you don't, you don't see. And we try to go back inbounds behind the door. Thus skipping the dialogue. This says around, I think, 8 to 11 seconds. And I will turn on coordinates, which will be necessary for a trick at the very end of the run at this level. And I will hand over the commentary to Phobic for the rest of the level. All right. Thank you, Distro. So right now we have a section in front of us. Casually, I would say, takes 30 minutes or so. There's a few things that we... That a casual player would have to do. They would have to clear out an area just to get through it. A whole bunch of hunters, snipers, elites, etc. Follow up with an area where you have to run around a huge open area to destroy five different cores. Then in the center, there's a button that you have to press that's guarded by a whole bunch of enemies. That Then there's a dome that has more waves of enemies coming at you that you get trapped inside. And it's really just a hassle to get through. We're going to skip all of that. <laughs> And we're going to use our good old friend Lunge Warp, or Ghost Ghost, from previously on Genesis, to do that. To start, Distro's going to time himself here with a few, few pistol shots to maintain this gondola's momentum. Very nice. And come all the way through this hallway. As well as you got a checkpoint, which is good. Here's the first area here. We're going to grab a sword on the left-hand side. We're going to be swapping out this sword for a orange sword later on. It is a special rec variant of a sword, which has extra stabilization time, as well as gives us two thrusters. So we're going to be using that. This is sticking to the left here, so a sniper doesn't shoot him. Running past a whole bunch more enemies here. Next, we're going to run through the blind spot of these turrets by going right underneath them and jump through this door here. Waiting on the right hand side for a checkpoint right now because it is very useful to get this. Once again, I mentioned uh, we were going to be using Ghost Ghost or Lunge Warp to uh, get through this area. And he is, Distro is going to set it up with this ghost right here. Melee, get in at the same time. Ooh, need a revert. How do we get it down? And uh, when he melees and gets in at the same time, that will make him invisible and put his biped or uh, player model somewheres up in the uh, skybox. Once there, if Distro gets out of the ghost in a certain fashion, he will be instantly teleported to that location, directly above where we need to be. Uh, a few difficulties here uh, setting this up. Good thing I got the checkpoints. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is why we wait for stuff like this. All right, let's see. First Third time's try. charm. Uh, I was too far. I was too far away, unfortunately. Oh, unfortunate. I think we'll get it next time. I believe. I do too. I uh, should warn that I will be busy talking a lot once Distro does get this trick, so I'm going to give a time warning right now. Um, doing an assassination, not the best look. For the grunt, I mean. 
You heard her. Weapons free. Eliminate the force. Oh, come on. <laughs> we'll get it. This is, we'll this it. is getting marathon luck. Uh, marathon luck, yes. Absolutely. But yeah, sometimes things just go a little bit wrong, but it doesn't matter. I'm still having fun. I hope that the viewers are enjoying this as well. I should get it very, very soon, I believe. I had I got out on the wrong side, but I still got it. Nice. Oh, there's our lunge drop. All right. So Dishra's going to come up to this rock here, jump out, immediately pop up over the dome that we need to be at and fall right down into it. The area inside is deloaded. So we'll see absolutely nothing in here, but the triggers are in here. We're going to hit two triggers. First one's going to start the fight. Second one's going to start the ending sequence. When he starts the fight, he gets teleported to the door where you would normally enter. And the ending sequence starts all of this dialogue. If you remember back on Osiris, the first mission that we played, uh, we had the area load in around us. We're going to do something very similar here. We're going to jump out over the abyss here, wait for our dialogue timing, and ground pound right in exactly on the ending pathway here. From here, we're going to head up the ramp. Uh, last GDQ, we uh, used a trick where we overlapped one of these waves that Distro was getting hit by, by the ending animation, and that saved us about 30 seconds total. Distro's not going to do that here. Look at the coordinates in the top left. We're looking for the magic number, 344607. Once Distro has that number, he's going to thrust forward onto a pixel-perfect position, and the level will just instantly end for him. And we'll save about another extra minute by doing that. Yeah, time warning. E Oop. Time is on black screen. Time. Time. There we go. All right. Well, that has been Halo 5 Guardians on the Legendary dif Difficulty by Distro. I would like to thank GDQ for uh, allowing me to be here, as well as I would like to thank Distro for inviting me. I'd also like to give a shout out to Halo Runs. Wait, why do you say Halo Runs? What's Halo Runs, you ask? HaloRuns.com, my friend. HaloRuns.com is for all your mainline Halo title needs. And not just HaloRuns.com, HaloRuns.com 2.0. We've had a new website revamp. We have extended categories on there. We have Infinite on there, Halo 5's on there, as well as it's much more optimized than before. i have also like to give a shout out to Taofool. He's probably not expecting this. Uh, Taofool has made an image auto splitter, and without that image auto splitter, we would not have a auto splitter for this game because this game is exclusively on console. So thank you. Distro, any part, parting words? Uh, yes, um, first of all, just to do a quick summary, the run had a lot of ups and downs, but that's, I think, a very good representation of Legendary and the skill that it takes to be able to improvise. I got really unlucky in some sections, but uh, the run was still very uh, great. I'm still below estimate, I believe. And I would like to shout out um, GDQ, of course, uh, the organizers, the host. Um, actually, I have a list of guys to shout out here. Of course, the uh, Twitch chat, uh, GDQ, all the viewers who are going to watch this. Guys are all amazing. Thank you all for the donations. I would like to shout out to the developers of Halo 5 uh, and also Halo Infinite because uh, they made sure that some of the tricks remained in the game that they knew about because of speedrunning. They actually made sure that the triggers still worked in uh, some sections when you go out of bounds. They didn't know how you would break the, break the levels, but they kept the triggers in for speedrunners, which is amazing. Thank you very much uh, to the developers. And then, of course, to my stream community, uh, to Phobic for the great co-commentary, thank you very much. And uh, just um, quickly, <laughs> self plug here, if you want to watch uh, Halo speedruns, Halo 5, uh, namely Halo Infinite, and if you also like the first free Splinter Cell games, you can follow me on twitch.tv slash distrotv. And that will be it for my side. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, I'm going to hand it over here. Bye. Bye. Thank you very much to Distro for that fantastic Halo 5 Guardians run. He finished the fight, y'all. He finished the fight just like we knew he would. Give him another virtual round of applause.
We've got some more of the 117 train coming into the station here at the end. 117 from Michael Lerman. Loving the Halo. Really entertaining run. Great job, Distro. Keep it up. Thank you so much. We've got $50 from Sam the Man. This donation's got to go towards Majora's Mask, one of my favorite Zelda games and the first game I play with my wife. Love you, Cass. Thank you so much. Let's check on that real quick. See if we've had maybe a turnover, a reversal of fortune. No, Majora's Mask 3D with $26,507 versus Ocarina of Time's $13,478. Now, I, I'm an Ocarina of Time guy. I want to see Ocarina tonight. So if y'all want to get those donations in just to make me happy, I'd really appreciate it. Get those donos in. $50 from Thomas Wynn, who says, so glad that a fundraiser like GDQ exists. Cancer sucks, and I love to watch gamers kick games' butts while I donate to kick cancers. Donation to Host Choice, we love cartridge blowers. Thank you so much. And now I have got something to talk to you guys about. We've got the greatest prize of all. There's a lot of prizes, and we're going to hear about them, but the greatest prize of all Mr. Game and Shout, here to talk to you about prizes. Oh, hi. Thank you, Cardi B. Hey, everybody. Welcome back once again to what I am told is correctly called Awesome Games Done Quick 2022 Online. I'm Mr. Game and Shout. And like Cardi said, I want to talk to you about some of the amazing prizes that we have. We've got a whole new batch of them here for you. So, all the prizes that I'm going to show you are currently available to win. Uh, you can find out more information about all of them on our website, gamesdonequick.com. If you're watching the stream there, prize information should be somewhere up here. Uh, donate button should be somewhere over here. Two very important locations that you need to know. Starting off, for a $5 minimum donation, you can get entered to win these small but adorable Amigurumi Fall Guys. Now, true story, I was talking with uh, our cameraman before we went live here, and I said, I wanted to do this bit. Maybe I'll, I'll take one of them and I'll like duct tape it to the back of my hoodie, right? And then at the end of the bit, I'll, or at the end of the prize segment, I'll go like, Ugh! and fall over. And then it's like stuck there to, it's Fall Guys, it's not Among Us. And um, yeah, got that one wrong. $5 minimum donation gets you in to win these. Thank you so much, Rachel, for sending those in. For a $10 minimum donation. See, I know a lot about video games. We have a Super Mario Tumblr Cup custom made by Weasley1912. Um, all of these logos, I believe, were handmade. Uh, the level text at the top says AGDQ 2022. Uh, it's about 30 ounces. It is hand wash only. It is absolutely gorgeous, and it could be yours. $10 minimum donation gets you entered to win that. For a $15 minimum donation is a prize that I have to be just as careful with as the name of the person that submitted it. From our good friend, Kiss My Black Glass, we have a Splatoon stained glass squid. This is actual stained glass, so I am going to be a little bit careful with it. But absolutely stunning. Would just look great hanging in a window as a sun catcher. Could be yours. $15 minimum donation gets you into win this. I'm going to set it very carefully over there. Making It Nerdy has hooked us up as well for a $20 minimum donation. You can get entered to win this Hylian Shield wood burning. Um, I'm, I don't know what there is to say about it. I love uh, the wood art that we've been getting these last few events. And this is just another fantastic example. $20 minimum donation gets you into win this. Thank you, Making It Nerdy, for sending it our way. And of course, y'all know... I love the Cuddly Friends. $25 donation. Get you into win this Sand Seal plush. Thank you so much, Jess Peters Art, for sending this sending this into us. Uh, this is the Sand Seal plush, uh, model after one, that is in Rizu's room. Rizu? Riku? I think it's Rizu. Look, I, I've played a lot of Breath of the Wild, but I'm bad with names. Doesn't matter. $25 minimum donation. You are automatically entered to win this. We also still have our day prizes available. Of course, there is the AGDQ 2022 Mask Up Banner by our artist LLK. Amazing job on that, as always. We also have the Classic Sonic Capsule Paintings. Uh, we did actually still have one of these here, and I did want to show it off to you, because like I said, 
it's not just the front that's painted. It goes all the way around the edges. Like, the work on this is incredible. Absolutely gorgeous. And, of course, we still have the Legend of Zelda laser-engraved mural of the map from the first Legend of Zelda game. All of this, again, it is not, it is not painted. It is burned in. All of this detail was laser engraved into the wood. All three of those day prizes available until the end of the Legend of Zelda 3DS Bid War, whichever one that ends up being. A uh, $50 minimum donation gets you into a, to win all those. Also, don't forget about our grand prizes. We've got two of them this year, both for a $250 cumulative donation. That was, of course, the Mark 9 Gaming PC. I can present, really, from our friends over at Skytech Gaming. Absolute beast of a machine. You can check out the full specs on the website, gamesdonequick.com. As well as the Legend of Zelda prize pack from our friends at Heroic Replicas. The Dark Link Master Sword, the Hylian Shield, the 35-pound Megaton Hammer. It is not your choice. You get all three if you win. $250 cumulatively gets you in to win that. So, please make sure you're keeping those donations in. We are almost at one million and $30,000 on a Wednesday night. That is incredible. You all are absolutely blowing us away with your generosity. Please keep it up. This is so amazing, so cool. That's all the time I've got for now. Thank you so much for hanging out. I've been Mr. Game and Shout. I'm going to hand you back over to my good friend, Cartridge Blowers. Let's keep going with the marathon. We'll see you all later. Thank you so much, Xiao, for telling us about all those amazing prizes. And thank you, chat, for sticking around for this next run that's coming up with Diddy Kong Racing. But first, a quick word from Twitch.
Welcome back, everyone, to Awesome Games Done Quick 2022 online, powered by Twitch. We're here to help the Prevent Cancer Foundation. And you know, it's been a pretty great day, everybody. But did you miss anything? Well, maybe you can find some fine suggestions from these intelligent and knowledgeable folks, Adef, Kizaron, and Spike Vegeta, with the Daily Recap. What's up, AGDQ 2022 Online? I'm Kizaron. I'm joined by two very handsome gentlemen in Spike Vegeta and Adef. Just jamming out. How are you two doing? Looking pretty fly over here in our flannels and oh, our yeah. pink shirts. Yeah, Ooh. looking good. Loving Feeling it. Feeling good. It. Feeling yeah, good. Yeah, the ADEF shirt yeah. is super duper spicy. I'm all about it. I wouldn't shut up about it for like two minutes straight. But we're not <laughs> here to talk about... Yeah. It, it's, it's a pretty good shirt. We're not here to talk about fashion, though, folks. We're here to talk about some of the highlights of the past 24 hours. We're going to run through some clips for all of you. If you haven't seen a daily recap before, we're just going to pull up some clips that we thought were really, really super cool throughout the entire day. But don't forget, just because there aren't certain clips on the show, it doesn't mean that everything else wasn't awesome. And you should definitely check everything out either via VODs or when they're uploaded on YouTube. So let's get right to it. Spike, you wanted to start strong with the Sonic block. Yeah, we're going into everyone's childhood favorite Sonic game, Snolf Zero. This is Sonic 1 where you can never come out of ball form. You are golf the entire time. So right here, he's in Labyrinth Zone. I can't beat this zone with all of the controls at my disposal. <laughs> Dole Wolf is an absolute madman taking it out. Look at this timer go down. Three, two, I'm having an anxiety attack just watching this right now. There's a zero on screen, probably gonna die. Nope, the immediate jumping out of the water stays calm the entire time. This man could actually be a real life golfer. You need that kind of patience to get through Stolf. Check out that run. Okay, so check this out. GeoGuessr, right? These two players are co-oping, which means the guy on the left can only see the map on Google Maps. Guy on the right can only see Street View. He plops in, he goes, oh yeah, uh, I think this is the northern island of Malta. Shocker, <laughs> it is Malta. <laughs> Literally just out of nowhere, my man's like, yes, this is a small island nation in the Mediterranean, and they were right. You gotta check out this whole run. They do some awesome co-op together, and it's so clear they know their stuff. It is just so sick. That's yeah. absolutely amazing to see how well they know the universe, apparently. <laughs> We're going back to the Sonic block. Robo Blast 2, amazing game to me. I love Doom. I love the graphics of this. This is the final boss. It's actually kind of terrifying. You can see how aggressive Lemon is being about this. And eventually, we're going to see that an attack is going to get launched his way. It's, it's going to be like a missile of some sort. It's any second now. And yeah, right here. And... He almost gets knocked <laughs> off of the edge. Pixels, <laughs> so pixels from falling. That's Charges so in, close. grabs the last available ring, and just keeps balling out. Like, absolutely amazing end to such an awesome run. And just a good example of how great the Sonic block has been. The but, reaction. The reaction. Yeah, just his, he, he couldn't even believe it. He was just like, oh, no, I'm about to die. And he's, he just remembered, I'm a gamer. I got this. Just grabs the <laughs> ring and proceeds. But, you know, there were other moments, too. So we're, we're going to keep the fun times rolling if you want to take over again, Spike. Yeah, let's go to some of the horror block last night where this is perhaps, if there is a run that I can recommend y'all watch, it maybe wouldn't be this one. No, please go watch this one. Pian, Beyond the Payon. I'm sure I or, or Payon, Beyond the Pian. Some order of that. This runner <laughs> showing up in the cosplay has a 20 minute estimate because this game is so punishing. A game over, you have to start over again. Pretty much busts this out first try, beats this in four minutes. I don't know if in the history of GDQ someone has gotten 25% or less of their estimate met, <laughs> dropped the mic, and walked out the door. Thank you, Swordfish4649, for getting us more on schedule. I appreciate you. Go check out this run chat. It's terrifying. Okay, so Halo 5, you just saw this run from Distro. If you didn't see it, I highly recommend you watch the whole thing. Our boy, Spartan117, about to get launched into the abyss. He just gets hit by this, this spinning foreground object oh and flies God. out of bounds. <laughs> this is the first mission, and then he uses this ground pound technique to get above this hallway, and he waits for the world to load around him, and the run is chock full of skips like this. It's so sick. Now, I'd be remiss not to bring up Crystal. Um... It's kind of cheating just because I was a part of that race. But uh, we're going to have, not necessarily a first, but once this clip finishes rolling, we're going to not even explain anything. We're just going to let the audio of the clip play. But just got to get that rolling. Do you want to end That's probably I don't know any of them, so... 
Uh, I'll give you the anime one, one and, uh, and uh, if you haven't heard this before, before then, then uh, you're going to buy for a treat. treat. But we we have one more clip that we're going to throw with some audio. We thought we'd share with everyone the hype that happened as soon as we hit the million dollars for the first time on a Wednesday in GDQ history. We we had an amazing run that led up to it. And we're just going to let the audio kind of speak for itself. Yeah, Yeah. it dumped dumped perfectly. perfectly. It saves about about seven seven seconds. seconds. But that's that's very very hard, hard, very very precise. precise. All right, All right. Well, before, before we get into this, 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 this is a hard, hard one. one. You, you, you decided, decided you, wanted you wanted to make, to make a harder, harder map. So you got, you got into, into it, and you, and you amped this up. up. Um, so, so before, before that, that, I want to know, know how close we are. We've got to keep that energy moving. How close we are right now. Gentlemen, before you start the hard map, let's give a one-point 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 We have reached one dollar. Times a million. I'm absolutely blown away that we hit a million dollars so quickly within the event. Don't forget, a million dollars isn't the stop. There's so many other incentives that we can reach. And Adef, I think you have one that's unlisted, actually. Yeah. Okay, listen up, GDQ gamers. I've got something for you that's not on the list. Mm -hmm. It's not on the sites. It's not on the list. I said that. This is a secret incentive. This is a secret incentive. All right, I'm cooking up just for you. Watch this. Okay, I'm going to move the camera here. Do you see that door? You see that door? It's a I've never door. opened I've never opened that door before. That's in my room, but I've huh. never opened it. Okay? Oh my God. I've never opened that mystery door. I'm going to open it. But only if we hit right. 2 million by Friday night. That's that's, that's the, a that's a brave thing to do. I'm laying the gauntlet down. Friday night on the daily recap, I'll be back if we hit 2 million by then I open the door. Live on stream, I open the door. The well, sequel to Beyond the PN. That's further <laughs> yeah. beyond. Could be behind that door chat. It will be yours for $2 million. Make it happen. I'm looking forward to seeing that door of mysteries open, but there's other stuff to look forward to throughout the rest of the week. We have a chock full of amazing games in this schedule. So, Spike, I think I was supposed to go to ADEF first, but I said Spike anyway. Spike, what are you looking forward to? Yeah, there's tons of awesome runs tomorrow. I definitely would give a shout out to uh, my own run. Kingdom Hearts 2 Randomizer is going to be cool tomorrow. Diddy Kong Racing right after this is going to be super, super sick. Make sure you watch that. And Resident Evil Village, we need $170,000, chat. That's a great way to get us moving towards $2 million. Do that. Come on, let's do it. Now, I, yeah, we, we have a little Discord bit of a... Showing. We have a bit of technical difficulties right now. Can't be a GDQ without that. We are back. There we go. Let's go, ADEF. You're, okay. you're, you're the chosen one. What do you I'm want? I'm the chosen one, baby. Do? Here we go. Let's okay, go so right. right after that, you know, tomorrow morning, early in the morning, we got the Castlevania block. It's chock full of good runs. You're not going to want to miss it. But my personal favorite for tomorrow, you've got to see the Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes run. It's going to be the Centurion, which is 100 modules on the bomb. You got to see it. Bonkers. Now, I'd be remiss not to mention the awful block for obvious reasons. It is me. I have terrible taste in games. I'm I'm gonna cheat a little bit though, even though I mentioned awful block. Zelda's adventure. Like we 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 gotta watch it. Zelda for CDI. We we just we have to see it. We just have to see. We have to. It's we it's to. gonna the be worth it. The full trilogy of Zelda the CDI games comes to a close of the GDQ worst tonight. Games. The absolute worst Zelda games, but ironically, some of the best content you're ever going to see at GDQ. Don't go away, folks. Stick around. We're going to go ahead and throw it up to the front. Once again, I'm Keezeron. That's Spike. That's ADEF. We'll catch you all at various times throughout the rest of the marathon. Have fun, everyone. Thank you so much for that recap, y'all. I don't know. I'm going to have Adolf's door on my brain for maybe the next two days. I, I need to see it open. I need to see it. That means we need $2 million, right? Let's get to $2 million, and we can do that with your generous donations. Let's read a couple of them, shall we? We got $50 from Gasparilla. Why all the Majora love? Am I the only OOT fan? 
I'm gonna tell you right now, you're not. You are not the only OOT fan. Let's see where we're at with Majora's Mask versus Ocarina of Time. Still far behind Ocarina at 13,773 to Majora's Mask 26,842. But we're getting there. I believe in us. We can do it. Kavaros, thank you so much for your $250 donation, where you just say less than three. And you know, that's the canonical pronunciation of that kind of don donation. It's less than three. Thank you so much, Kavaros. $25 from Anonymous. I have no idea what Mega Mem 2 is, nor what bad grammar pursuant means, but as a love of awful block, I need to see this. I'm gonna tell you right now, you do need to see that. It's it's a video game that exists, so uh, you're gonna wanna watch it. $200 from Zargon X. I've got nothing clever to say, just keep doing good for the world and playing those games. On it, Zargon, thank you so much. $250 from IRC Geek. No comment, but thank you so much for your generous donation. $250 from Eduardo. Thank you for a great program and a great cause. Awesome soundtrack this year, too. I cannot agree more. I cannot agree more. I haven't heard Black Knight 2000 yet, but you know, I, it, it's fine. It's still really good. $1,000 from Anonymous. Hachi Machi. Hashtag Team Dog for Stardew Valley. Cat lovers in shambles. Okay, now that one I can agree with. That one I am on the side of. Let's see where that incentive is at. Um, I don't actually have that one up, but we can check on it in just a bit. $50 donation from Irrelevant. It's a great name. I am always excited when GDQ season comes around. It's amazing to see so many people come together to support a great cause. The speedrunning community as a whole is fantastic. I agree wholeheartedly. $150 from I Am Canadian. Awesome are the people running the games, setting up the streams, the voices keeping us going, being it late at night or early in the morning, the people donating for their favorite games to support a larger cause, and the people working tirelessly to set up the next installment. You have certainly earned the title for this event, and I thank you all for literally saving nearly everyone in my family over the last decade through early screening and quick treatment. I feel like this is less of a donation and more of an investment in the future. Thanks again, and sorry if I missed anyone, but just in case, you're awesome too. I think he's talking about you, chat. You're awesome. We got $50 from Dr. McAskey, who says, so happy to see that total on the rise. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. I am also excited to see that total on the rise. I cannot believe we hit a million. I think we'll hit two, three. Five, ten, and we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. A hundred dollars from Oliver Ferris, part-time ferret. Howdy do, GDQ. Super excited to see the upcoming Zelda run. Whichever one wins the bid war, I feel both of the games have had interesting tech that make each game worth watching. Glad to be able to put my money to a worthy cause. Here's for a better tomorrow. Thank you very much, Oliver Ferris, part-time ferret. $15 from Duckmeat. Shout out from the Talking Simpsons server. We love GDQ and all the speedrunners. We love you too, Duckmeat. $50 from the Pizza Doctor. Another fantastic year of AGDQ. Blazing hot Australia summer and have been lucky enough to have the whole week off. My place has been even hotter running my PC and the stream all week. Thanks again for the extremely high quality production and presentation. My money is going towards Ocarina of Time and the 3DS Zelda Bid War. Maybe won't turn it around, but my vote will count still. 